guest up is here to talk about his new book, Dear Pat Cooper. We have the author, Michael Caputo, here tonight. So let's give a nice round of applause. Great. <laughs> Michael, how are you, buddy? Nice to meet you. How Thanks for you? having me. What's going on? Dana, thank you. You got here all right tonight? I certainly did. You hit a little Took bit of that time. New York traffic? Absolutely. Of course, a little Obama. That's another thing, Obama. Let's get these streets fixed. I mean, I got a long list. Next I, show is all about politics. I got to sit down with this Obama. Obama. Yeah. Most you know Obama, my mama, I'll be all right, right? <laughs> I said that on my way. I should have to tell you. Osama Obama. I'm sorry. So, Michael, listen, let's talk about the book. What's it about? Okay, the book is about love, forgiveness, and healing. All right. It's also an open letter to my father, uh, showing him and telling him about all the things he missed by not being in my life. All right. And third, and most importantly, it's a tribute to my paternal grandmother, my father's mother, and my mother, the two women in my life that were always there mm -hmm. and made me the person I am today. Right. Great. Now Sounds listen, when good. did you decide to write this book? At what point of your life, actually? Well, I've always been writing the book up here, but pen to paper about five years ago. And then I got on that computer and uh, religiously every single night, you know, putting it together, tightening it up. Uh, and here I am. Wow. Now, why do you think Pat Cooper is so angry? Uh, that's a good question. I, no, we haven't found that, that answer yet. Yeah. But um, I don't know why he's angry, because he's a very blessed man. And um, he's had a blessed life, a successful career. He's been a, has two families that love him. Right. And he's been a healthy man. Yeah. And he's 81. And uh, what do you want more than that? God bless. I seen him not too long ago. I actually, he's good friends with a boss of mine. We were in Westchester and he opened up for, uh, we were doing something for Call Heasty, I believe. Mm -hmm. And he, he was great, so I had the pleasure of meeting your father. I always liked his acting and his stand-up. I never got to meet, oh, I think I, I met him once, fast and passing. Uh, he actually got invited to come down to CTV once, and then he, he left because uh, the guy who booked him on the show had, didn't have it all organized. So he, he, he left. <laughs> I wanted to get him on. But, but uh, what did you hope to accomplish when you wrote this book? Um, I really wanted Tim to know what he missed in my life. I also wanted to accomplish uh, getting the... Uh, the story out there mm -hmm. and what really went on behind the scenes. After we made Radio Ratings History back on the Howard Stern Show 20 years ago, wow. um, it was finally out there. Right. Uh, uh, that, that show gave me a voice. Uh, it happened all by accident. But then it was also very hurtful to my whole family, especially to my grandmother. And I decided to uh, just hold on the book and not really put pen to paper until a later date. Mm -hmm. Now my grandmother's been gone 12 years and I knew it was time. So I uh, wrote the book. I sent the manuscript over to Cody Boy Entertainment, which is a health and wellness company. And um, after Frank Baldessari, the CEO of uh, Cody Boy Entertainment, read the book, he said, Mike, this story's gotta be told. In accomplishing also, it was very cathartic for me and also to help other people out there that mm -hmm. had uh, emotionally unavailable parents right. or a parent or both mm -hmm. uh, who weren't there for them. Right. And they could maybe learn something from you know, what I did and what I wrote. Uh, realizing after I wrote the book, seeing my life down on paper, I realized that I was quite fortunate in a way that I had gotten a lot of other love from other members of the family, my grandmother, my mother, For sure. and the family, to fill in that gap that I was missing. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody else reading this could, uh, you know, benefit by this. Right, really. Definitely. Now, has your father read it? Have you heard from him? Well, I haven't heard directly from my father, but I know that my father has read the book because uh, I heard from his camp. Uh, his camp meaning um, his son-in-law. His son-in-law controls his Facebook page and his MySpace page <laughs> and won't let me on there as a fan or really? a friend. It's not good. And he sent me emails telling me that if uh, he, he's going to buy the book for Pat Cooper, for his father-in-law, and whatever I have in the book better be truth, and I better not say anything about his family like I wasn't a part of the family, um, or I'm going to find myself in court. Wow. Well. So that's how I kind of heard, I don't think I'll be hearing from my father. I haven't heard from anybody, so obviously uh, everything in the book is, is fine according to him. 
Well, you seem like a gentleman. Uh, what has been the response for the book? Have you ever any feedback from it yet? I got very positive uh, feedback from my father's friends that called me because uh, from my email, and then they got my phone number. My father's friends called me. Uh, people that read the book, uh, very positive responses, and uh, it was just very touching to know that they took their time out in their lives, and everybody's got their own problems, yeah. to read my book and then uh, you know, taking more time out to send me back some kind of feedback. Right. We're saying that I helped them, my uncle was like this, my father was like this too, uh, my mother was like this, uh, you know, that type of thing. Well, how long has the book been out yet? What was the release date actually on this? Um, at the end of October, early November. All right. Well, you got a book right here to give out to our, one of our uh, studio Absolutely, audience. Absolutely, and I hope so that everybody out there will uh, get the book. So everybody. It's uh, sold on Amazon. It's and raffle time. <laughs> also, my website is dearpatcooper.com. And what I want to say is on my website, there is a uh, beautiful video, a rare video interview of my grandmother and me, Pat Cooper's mother and me, that I did back in 1986 uh, speaking about her son. So you could hear it in my grandmother's own words about her son. Wow. Well, we have more questions for you. Okay. It's raffle time. Okay. So right. let's, uh, let's, let's, do it. let's go in here and let's, yeah. let's get a, a, a ticket for you and we'll see. Who's the lucky winner? Read off that number. Okay. <laughs> 44, 76, 36. Oh, man. No good? <laughs> Our cameraman's upset. One more? He didn't win it. 44, 76, 31. Woo! Yay! Nice. Right. Bingo, see? Look at that. Well, listen to this. I got an extra bonus. Besides the uh, Dear Pat Cooper book, uh, I met Lita Ford, hung out with her this weekend. You got the new Lita Ford album. All right, great. Now getting back to Mike, uh, do you have any regrets with the Howard Stern book and what led up to it? You know, fill us in a little bit about Howard Stern. Okay. Well... I'm grateful to Howard Stern because at that time, like I said, it happened by accident and that I finally was able to get a voice. I called in the radio show, then my sister called in and my grandmother called in. So we had a voice, it was all out there. Right. But like I said, it was pretty heavy duty. There wasn't a stone left unturned. Um, and I just sat back there and waited. Um, my grandmother was upset and everything like that. So I didn't, I was, I didn't have any regrets when I did the show. I was you know, very happy that it happened. Okay. And I ended up being on the Geraldo Rivera show wow. also. And um, a lot of stuff went down. But I have no regrets for anything that has happened since the Howard Stern show up until this point. Um, the only regret I do have is that my book came out and my grandmother's not here to see the book. Mm -hmm. Because she always said to me, she says, Mike, you're gonna have to forgive your father someday. And my grandmother forgave my father even before, before she died, she said that to me. You will have to forgive your father. For and sure. And I have forgiven my father. But I'm just sad that she's not here. Maybe she's looking well, down. She sees definitely she's definitely is. smiling, she definitely saying that my grandson, you know, finally did what uh, I wanted him to do. Now listen. She'd be very proud of that book. For sure. for sure. Now listen, before we go, if your father was here right now, I mean, would there be anything that you would like to say to him or do with him? Yes, I'd like to say the same thing to my father that my grandmother said in the interview on my website. And that is that I love you, Dad. Uh, I have no regrets. And whatever will be, will be. I wish I could make peace with you. I wish I would have had a relationship with you. And I forgive you. Well, you're, you're a good man. But, uh, it is what it is, right? Yes, it is. But, Michael, thank you so much for taking the time out and sharing everything with everybody. Thank you for having me. Thanks for having me. Michael,